Here we are again with another video in our Entertaining Your Wall series. Number four, we did rose gold roses. Number three, we duplicated artwork. And video number two, we upcycled a tabletop into a wall mirror. And in video number one, it was a pocket watch for your walls. And somewhere along the way, I issued an open collab invitation on Instagram if you have a spring or Easter tablescape coming up. Welcome to Amateur Decorating Like a Pro. I'm Catherine. Let's go ahead and go to work. Now, if you're looking for a Moroccan or a shabby chic or maybe a rustic kind of vibe or you're just feeling eclectic, clothespins can help you a lot when you're creating your wall art. And these clothespins are from the Dollar Tree. There will be a complete list of the supplies you will need for each project that I'm going to show you. But let's go ahead and jump right in. The first thing you want to do is disassemble each clothespin and then flip it to the back side and glue the back of the pins together. You can just use a little crazy glue, just a little dot will do. And sometimes I did a little too much, but you know, and eventually I got it right. Just a little dot will do. Now for added pressure, you can apply rubber bands or use binder clips, which I just happen to have in my craft room. This project is basically going to carry me through several projects, so it's very important that I get this one right. I'm simply flipping the clothespin, some in and some outward, using my hot glue gun. Just putting a dot of glue in between the clothespins at the same point every single time, and then just adding one complete ring of glue around the whole thing. Now don't be disappointed if it falls apart when you pick it up. That's okay. You've got big chunks of it still glued together and it's still held in place. So thinking in terms of doing a starburst mirror with one of those Dollar Tree five inch mirrors, I've just got a piece of paper here in the middle, basically to make sure I get everything centered. Now you can get rid of your hot glue strings with your blow dryer on medium heat, of course. So let's just consider this reef our very first project. I'm going to only talk about staining at this point because this step applies to all of the other projects. Just take a small paintbrush, dip it into your stain and lightly brush it on to the reef. Take a paper towel and just press down lightly if you oversaturate it in the area. Wood is porous, it absorbs everything that you put on it. Now you don't have to stain it like I did. You can spray paint, hand paint, sponge paint, whatever you want to do to give it a pop of color. Now to assemble your wreath, you want to just take a clothes hanger or any kind of thick wire, something that you can bend very easily, of course. I'm using a clothes hanger and you want to cut it to the length or the circumference of your wreath. So it fits right on the part that you connect it with the glue. And then you want to just apply glue directly to the wire and have it kind of connect or run over the edges of your wire. That's it. That's all you need to do to create the reef. I'm using my wire cutters to hold the wire down while the glue is cooling down. There are 36 clothespins in each packet. So you'll need two of them. This wreath contains 54 clothespins, 27 on the inner ring and 27 on the outer ring. Now you only need to use the wire for the wreath, not for any other project. Now keep in mind at this point, I'm using the same wreath or project over and over again. My Dollar Trees are running out of clothespins and basically I bought them out. So keep that in mind. So at this point, we've simply made a wreath. Now we're moving on to another project. I love the wreath, but I made a mistake and I placed the mirror on top of the wreath and my mind went Boom! Do this and do this now. Well, I decided that I would take it up a notch and having stained the piece, 
I decided to place it on canvas. You know, my walls are dark, so anytime that I get to add a little light to them using canvas, I'm going to take that. I placed the entire thing on this piece of canvas and there is a book underneath it so I don't apply too much pressure on top of the canvas. And then I used some of the broken clothespins to make sure I had equal spacing and I glued them to the canvas. I glued both the inner ring and the outer ring to the canvas and I'm using my old small hot glue gun. It's very small at the tip so it can slide very easily under the edges of the clothespin. And with it being small it seldom dispenses too much glue on a project. And once again, I used my blow dryer to get rid of all of those crazy hot glue strings all over the place. I was constantly placing a mirror in the center of this project to make sure that the opening didn't get too big. So when it came time to add the mirror, all I had to do was take my E6000, add it to the tips of the clothespins in the very center, and then place my mirror on top of it. Now here's what I love about this project. It's a very clean project. Basically, I have my sunburst, I have my canvas, and I have my mirror. So it's very clean and it basically doesn't need anything else. I am really challenging myself this year not to over embellish my projects and limit their versatility when it comes to moving them from room to room. So I'm really challenging myself. I'm only adding a few gemstones on this canvas so that it will remain nice and simple but yet have a little touch of bling and with or without the gems it is still a gorgeous project on canvas this is a 16 by 20 canvas and it's a perfect size to add another one right next to it or maybe two of them you don't necessarily have to have the clothes pins in the laundry room all right guys, whatever you consider to be art this day and age is indeed art. I'm always on Pinterest, I got my favorite magazines, and of course I listen to my favorite interior designers, Lou Tamala from Holt on Design, and I am loving anything that I see that has natural wood. And these clothespins, yep their wood and seeing all of the carvings out there you can't go into a store without seeing that right now i'm inspired to kind of create something natural in my home so getting back to what i'm doing right now with this project i've got a placemat here from the dollar tree and i'm using 79 clothespins the prep work has been done i'm applying a little bit of glue to the tip of the clothespins and i using the same distance from the edge every single time for each clothespin I'm gluing them to the placemat and like I said I'm only applying the glue to the tip of the clothespin now I stained the project as I was going around applying the glue I would do stop and apply stain and it's just a paper towel underneath it this application was so light I didn't make a mess at all lifting up the edges here applying the stain around the edge and this was very very simple you could whitewash at this point you were using a paintbrush if you wanted to do that whatever you wanted to do to give it a pop of color and as you know wood is porous so as as soon as you apply your application it's being absorbed so you don't need to put on a whole lot of whatever it is that you want to add I am loving these projects guys so pretty now this is a seven inch mirror that I had from a previous project and look how nice that would look in the very center of this placemat as wall art. Now if you're a blinger and you're determined to bling it up then by all means go ahead and get out your gemstones and do just that. I'm loving, loving the color here. Don't you love this? Oh it's so relaxing. But I don't want to bling this piece because I have another use for it but I just want to give you some options. And I will say this that when the wood 
or your decorative edges are this gorgeous, try not to put too much bling on them. It detracts away from them and that is just such a stunning finish. And I really want that to be a focal point. And just like before, use a paper towel to remove any excess stain. Now, a couple of things here. If you do not want the edges of the blue placemat to show through, then just remove one of the edges after you have applied all of your clothespins with the hot glue. Just find one of the threads and it will pull and unravel that outer ring. I prefer it to stay because I also would like to make this reversible. You'll see why. Now to hang this ethnic or rustic piece on the wall, just disassemble a binder clip and insert it into the weave of the placemat and hang it on the wall. Use two of those metal pieces. Insert those maybe about six to eight inches apart and you might wanna add a third one, it's up to you. Just hang it on the wall, it's very pretty. Now, obviously you were thinking that this was a placemat project all along and I was just being adventurous. Well, you're partially correct. So I have here my 79 clothespins on top of my Dollar Tree placemats and I absolutely love it. Remember that Pure One placemat or shall I say it was a charger? that was out there a couple of years ago and I had the same finish, but it also was whitewashed. I fell in love with it, but it was so expensive. Now guys, this final tip I learned after the fact. In other words, I learned the hard way. If you want a reversible placemat, all you have to do is apply your clothespins to the wrong side of the placemat. That way, when you flip it over, those blue edges will be nice and clean as if that's the right side up, which is exactly what it is, right side up. But that's it for me, guys. If you're going bohemian, Moroccan, rustic, or whatever it may be, this is a really simple DIY and a very inexpensive one. If you're not a subscriber, please consider doing so today. Remember to turn on your notifications so you don't miss a single video. Like, what am I doing for artwork in my living room? Turn on your notifications. Thanks a lot for watching. And as always, stay in prayer and stay creative.